I fix it, bringing the fight for right to repair to McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. I I think this is hilarious and cool. This is so cool. They bought and tore down a McDonald's ice cream machine in order to determine the cause of their well-known unreliability. In terms of hardware, as you'd probably expect for an industrial piece of equipment that has like a tiny crappy little display on it and otherwise does basically nothing other than squirt out cold stuff, uh, the guts of the machine are pretty basic. They consist of a compressor, a motor, and circuit boards. However, the machines are prone to overheating and around 10% of McDonald's ice cream machines are broken at any given time, which is remarkable and another incredible rabbit hole that I would strongly recommend. It's very interesting. The issue appears to be mostly software-based. The machine's once-daily repasteurization cycle takes around four hours to complete, but it is easily disrupted and often needs to be manually reset. The machine will frequently throw out confusing error codes, which have to be interpreted using an obtusely written manual. According to a long-standing contract, all McDonald's ice cream machines are built and must be repaired by Taylor, the company that makes them. Taylor is typically slow to respond to requests, and 25% of Taylor's profits come from the service technicians that are called out to fix these machines. And get this, they cost $315 every 15 minutes. So what does that work out to? $1,260 an hour. Wow. I need a raise. No kidding. Well, yeah, let's go. you're going to have to go to the ice cream machine ice cream repair, repair industry. industry. Yeah. Uh, I got yeah. some bad I chose news. the for wrong you. career. I got some bad news for you. What? The technicians aren't the ones making that money. Duh. Got them. At one point, a startup called Kitsch developed a device that automatically interprets the machine's error codes, allowing franchise owners to conduct their own basic repairs. However, this is great. McDonald's head office pressured franchisees to stop using it. Really? Well, you're just getting paid off. Pockets lined. So now, That's what that means. I fix it is petitioning the copyright office for an exemption that allows third-party repair workers to fix industrial and commercial equipment. However, in order to bypass Taylor's digital locks, they are also requesting that Congress address flaws in the DMCA that protects this kind of behavior. Let's go. Let's go. I fix it. The Love fact it. that I mean, you know what? There are certain industries where I think you can at least make an argument. If we're talking about a machine that keeps your heart beating, right? I think that if a manufacturer were to say, look, we should really be the only ones to service this thing, there's at least an argument to be made, even if the medical industry is extremely predatory and all the same things we're looking at here are happening, except in those cases, it's life and death. So it's, it reaches a whole new level of amorality. I'm not arguing any of that. I'd like to make that actually clear so that this you know doesn't end up being misinterpreted yeah it's disgusting but at least there's an argument to be made and maybe maybe uh i think some arguments could be made there too where like building a code interpreter might be okay in that scenario and then certain levels of repairs to certain things might be okay but there's like certain levels of repairs that should really be done by fully certified technicians etc etc i don't know but yeah. Um, but an ice cream machine, this is not life or death for the most part. I mean, anything consumable probably is, but as anyone who's ever worked in a commercial kitchen will tell you, you know, the, 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 the repasteurization cycle on the ice cream machine is probably the least of your concerns. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think oh, yeah. have all three of us worked in food service at I some haven't. point. Really? I went straight into lifeguarding. That was my first job. Um, and I'm glad I did from everything that I've heard. But if you guys want to tell some stories, I always find these to be highly amusing. I would be careful of ordering taco pizzas from shops that you don't think taco pizzas get ordered from often. And why would that be? Because the sour cream sure might not be that new. Mm. I mean, it's supposed to be sour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> real sour <laughs> that would be my main thing is like consider 
<laughs> consider to a certain degree how often the place you're ordering from is going through the ingredient that you're ordering. Get this. First response in chat is, what the f*** is a taco pizza? So that should give you some idea how often these are getting ordered. The, but this Which is, is a big part of Luke's problem with yeah, them. Yeah, <laughs> they exist. And it's like the only thing that gets sour cream in the whole shop. Um, so just think about it. If, if that pizza place is like famous for their taco pizza, maybe it's fine. Sure. But if you're like, wait, what the heck? Tots, taco pizza exists. Uh, just consider it. That's all I would say. They might be completely fine. They might be totally above board. They might use the sour cream and other things. They might be very diligent about making sure that they're replacing expired sour cream. Um, but I guarantee you they're not all that way. So just, yeah, that's it. What's yours? We need a, we need a story. Oh. A little bit uh, more violent about that. Everything is clean top to bottom every single day. Uh, fresh produce every single day. Even our bread was made fresh every day. Oh, that's uh, pretty nice. That sounds like a lot of work. It was a lot. And that, <laughs> yeah. It started at like 6 with the set menu. And the baker started at 5 a.m. Oh, we, they can't hear you. Oh, I thought you did that too. Whoops. Uh, I used to work in fine dining. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, you guys get the story now. We'll just um, yeah, just do it again. Uh, yeah, do it God, again. Uh, yeah. uh, I used to work in fine dining. Uh, it was a little bit different. I don't know if I have any bad stories, but uh, yeah, everything was clean top to bottom, bottom every single day. Uh, all the ingredients were fresh every day, and was pretty much only what we could get that day. Uh, leftovers like our veal stock and things like that would be made from leftovers from the previous days service and then boiled overnight and then skimmed and basically continued into the rest of stuff fresh bread every single day all that sort of thing i don't know desserts so wh what's this restaurant so i can exclusively eat there or I sh I, you don't have to name it i, if I won't i won't name it uh publicly sure uh, but okay. i'll tell you if you want i don't know if it's the same i haven't worked there in a long time i, I think that's part of my point though is like yeah. c consider the restaurant that you're going to and if you're like ah this place definitely pays everyone that's working there absolute minimum wage and like doesn't treat their employees well and is like a little not that amazing and they have something that has i got a good tip for you taco uh, sour cream stuff on it, and we don't think it's going to sell that much. Consider ordering that because their their cleanliness levels and stuff might not be that amazing. But other places it might be fine. I want to hear Dan's tip. Will they give you a tour of the kitchen? <laughs> Imagine that getting a tip from a waiter. I was that's back actually, at house. That's pretty oh, interesting. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we used to do tours of uh, of the kitchen. You did tours of the kitchen. Yeah, if you had a, a nice client in who was like, I'd really like to meet the chef. This meal was lovely. And we'd bring him back in. You know, floors are done. I don't think I've ever eaten at the kind of restaurant you worked at. Oh. Yeah, maybe <laughs> not. Yeah. I, 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 would yeah. it occur to you in a thousand years? No. We had ask a the server if yeah. you could have a tour of the kitchen and meet the chef. No. I mean, that's like super cool and sounds really fancy w and awesome or whatever. Would you do that like, for everyone or does it, they have to like have It didn't spent happen enough very something? often, but yeah. you know, I think it's the kind of guy who would come in there and be like, this was nice. I got to meet this chef. Uh, that, that kind of person doesn't come through very often, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but, fair enough. Uh, yeah, yeah. We were, I mean, it was clean enough and we ran a tight enough ship that that was totally fine. Uh, Jake from the lab says, my story, X was a professional chef, worked at a high-end steakhouse in Bristol. And if anybody ordered a well-done steak, the chefs would toss it on the ground first and call it floor spice. I think that's like a crime. <laughs> that, is just, that is just a crime, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, that's like a, a game. Well, I don't know about in Bristol, but here I think you'd be breaking like actual laws around food safety. I mean, I can tell you this. I dropped one of the burger patties from the party, from the pool party. I have no idea who ate it, but they're not dead, so. <laughs> okay, but you're not a restaurant. <laughs> I'm really not. I think, yeah, I think it makes a big More difference. More of a ghost kitchen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah there you go. And, 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 and hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It was, uh-oh, chat. Um. <laughs> It was pre being cooked. I was cooking them from frozen. So it like basically I, I might as well have dropped a piece of plastic on the floor in terms of like how much, you know, ground schmoo. Oh, this is outdoors, mind you. Uh, but like <laughs> how much porch schmoo it managed to pick up. And it was pre cooking it, obviously. So it spent the next like nine minutes or whatever at 400 degrees Celsius. So it's like whatever was on it is dead. 
Um, it might have been me who ate it. One in like 45 chance that it was me, so yeah. probably not, yeah, but... Yeah. Um, uh, some yeah. people are saying that I, I'm traumatized by this taco pizza. I, I actually, I got in a debate with my boss at the time. Uh, about it. We had like a little fight about it because he, he was like ordering people to serve expired sour cream um, And I was like pissed, but I was also like 12 um, So there were limitations to what I could accomplish. Oh, sorry 400 Fahrenheit 400 Fahrenheit. We cook in Fahrenheit up here I've, I guess yeah, whatever and we did we did get complaints about it. So it, like it actually was like a big thing, but yeah To clarify they would toss it on the ground pre-cooking. Thanks Jake. That's uh, very helpful, but they were probably not cooking from frozen, so they probably picked up a lot more floor schmoo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on. <laughs> What's two more topics? Oh, okay. What the fuck? Oh man, people at float plane chat are like going through their their experiences. I worked for Timmy's when I was seventeen. I could write a book with the stuff I've seen people do. My direct manager was so lazy. She used to scoop the chocolate out of the tubs with her bare hands into the warming bins. Also, never order the broccoli cheddar soup. Hashtag facts. I think that's one of my examples, though. How many people are going to order broccoli cheddar soup from Tim's? I've eaten it. Mm -hmm. I like broccoli soup. Oh. I'm really unhappy about it right now. I get chili from Tim's. This might be just as bad. Oh, no, the chili is if you... Okay, this is all hearsay, but what I have heard said is that especially if you're at a Tim's Wendy's combo restaurant, the chili is made of the meat that is not good enough to put in a burger anymore. Nice. That makes sense. I don't know if that's true. That could be not I a fact. I don't think that's true because I don't think they make it there. I think they just heat it up. I think well, it comes to the store. I don't know. That's I, That was an interesting tip someone gave me. If you want to figure out if the restaurant that you're at is just reheating things, ask them to make a small change to a soup. CH5609 says uh, perpetual chili. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Uh, yeah, cool. Wendy's chili is burger meat, apparently. Um, that's a, this, the chat says it. I don't know if this is true. I don't know if this is true. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's true. Okay, so fast, I don't know. Fast I feel food. Like we should move on from. If food we were, topics. if we were trying to take care of ourselves, we wouldn't eat it anyway. So realistically, bring it on. Yeah. 